So aboard Bonhomme Richard, Jones starts his voyage to glory. Well, it's not a very glorious voyage. Uh, they don't find any rich convoys. They don't engage in any rollicking engagements, as they say. And the crew's getting a little frustrated, and so too is John Paul Jones. Until finally, they're heading south along the east coast of England, near a place called Flamborough Head. And as they're coming down the coast, they capture a local English fisherman. And they ask the fisherman, you know, what's happening? What's going on in the neighborhood? And the fisherman tells them that everybody ashore is rather excited because the Baltic fleet is due home at almost any moment. The Baltic fleet is very important to the Royal Navy. Ever since the revolution had begun, the Royal Navy no longer had access to naval stores, tar, pitch, turpentine, from the colonies. And so they had turned to the Baltic. And they were importing all of this material, which was absolutely essential to the Royal Navy. It's like oil would be to us today. And so Jones hears now the Baltic fleet. So he decides to hang around a little bit. And it works. They spot the Baltic fleet heading down towards England. Now this is an age of sail. Ships move very slowly. It takes hour upon hour for these two enemies to close on one another. They see one another for a long time as they slowly, slowly come together. The Baltic fleet is being escorted by two Royal Navy vessels, HMS Serapis under the command of Captain Pearson and a smaller vessel called the Princess of Scarborough. As they come close, Bonhomme Richard and Serapis come within hailing dis distance. They can hear one another. And the story goes, perhaps a bit of exaggeration here, but the story goes that Captain Pearson hails Bonhomme Richard, asking Bonhomme Richard, who are you? And Jones replies, Princess Royal, which at the very same moment as he replies that, the gun ports fly open and Bonhomme Richard lets loose with a barrage against Serapis. The battle begins. And it is indeed quite a battle between these two sailing warships. The two vessels eventually grapple one another. That is, they come close side by side. It's not going so well for Bonhomme Richard because she's old and doesn't sail quite as well as Serapis does. Uh, in the midst of the battle, again one of these uh, pieces of apocryphal perhaps, uh, Pearson is supposed to have called out to Captain Jones, Sir, do you strike? And Jones replies, I have not yet begun to fight. Well, the battle continues. In the midst of the battle, a grenade is thrown over on to Serapis and it explodes, doing severe damage. And so out of this, Serapis surrenders to Jones. Captain Pearson surrenders his sword. Uh, they do all they can to save Bonhomme Richard, but she's in such terrible condition that the next day Bonhomme Richard actually sinks. But Jones and his crew and the British, of course, survivors, and Captain Pearson, all go back to France aboard HMS Serapis. When they get back to France, Jones is, he is an enormous hero. This is a, an incredible accomplishment. But interestingly enough, when Captain Pearson gets back to London, the king knights him, simply because Captain Pearson did his job. He protected the Baltic fleet. Oh yes, Jones took HMS Serapis, but he didn't take the fleet. And so Pearson too is a hero. When Jones hears that Captain Pearson has been knighted, he's supposed to have responded, the next time I meet him, the king will make him a duke. So Jones, is, Jones goes down in history for that great, and it was a, an incredible victory.